The business model shows business processes and their information flows and allows stakeholders to define, understand and validate their business enterprise. The data model part of the business model shows how business information is stored, which is also useful for developing the data warehouse, the main data system dedicated to storage, reporting and analysis. Stakeholder is a person, is a group or an organization having an interest in the company's business processes or in the project dedicated to improve them. Usually, a model or a business model is created after conducting an interview, which is part of the business analysis process. Models are representations of the reality. Therefore, what you experience later may be something different. Business process represents the sequence of activities taken by various participants to repeatedly achieve a business goal. It is commonly accepted that an organization is only as good at its processes, people and tools. The important concept is that in order to make the necessary changes in an organization one need first to understand existing key processes of the company. Business process management is a business discipline that enables an organization to combine people, process, knowledge and technology to achieve business value. The process-driven organization treats these business processes as a portfolio of valuable corporate assets. BPM techniques are used to explicitly define and execute processes in a manner that create significant benefits. For example, if a product entering the warehouse is first registered on a paper form and later entered in the computer database, it might be more efficient to use scanners that eliminate the need for the paper form. BPMN models consist of single diagrams constructed from a limited set of graphical elements. For both business users and developers, they simplify understanding business activities, flows and processes. BPMN's four basic element categories are events, activities, gateways and connections. An event is represented with a circle and denotes something that happens, compared with an activity which is something that is done. Icons within the circle denote the type of event, for instance an envelope representing a message or a clock representing time. Events are also classified as catching, for instance if catching an incoming message starts a process or throwing, such as throwing a completion message when a process ends. The start event, this acts as a process trigger indicated by a single narrow border and can only be catch, so is shown with an open outline or icon. The intermediate event represents something that happens between the start and end events. An activity is represented with a rounded corner rectangle and describes the kind of work which must be done. A task represents a single unit of work that is not or cannot be broken down to a further level of business process detail. Sub-process is used to hide or reveal additional levels of business process detail. A transaction is a form of sub-process in which all contained activities must be treated as a whole. A gateway is represented with the a diamond shape and determines forking and merging of paths depending on the condition expressed. Note that there is no work to be done by the gateway. For instance, 
If you need to check that all material is in stock before you start assembling your product, this activity shall be done before the gateway. The gateway will just check that the condition is met without actually doing any work. A gateway could be exclusive and is used to create alternative flows in the process. Because only one of the paths can be taken, it is called exclusive. A gateway can also be a parallel gateway and this is used to create parallel paths without evaluating any conditions. Or it can be inclusive, used to create alternative flows where all paths are evaluated. A sequent flow is represented with a solid line and arrowhead and shows in which order the activities are performed. In this example we will see how to process the order for a pizza. The main actors here are the customer and the vendor. Because we want to model the interaction between a customer and the vendor, we have classified them as participants and therefore providing them with dedicated pools. Please note that there is no default semantics in this type of modeling. If we step through the diagram, we should start with the pizza customer who has noticed her stomach growling. The customer therefore selects a pizza and orders it. After that, the customer waits for the pizza to be delivered. The event-based gateway after the task order a pizza indicates that the customer actually waits for two different events that could happen next. Either the pizza is delivered, as indicated with the following message event, or there is no delivery for 60 minutes. For instance, after one hour the customer skips waiting and calls the vendor asking for the pizza. We now assume that the clerk promises the pizza to be delivered soon and the customer waits for the pizza again, asking again, after the next 60 minutes and so on. Probably we will wait much less than 60 minutes in a real world. Let's have a closer look at the vendor process now. It is triggered by the order of the customer as shown with the message start event and the message flow going from order a pizza to that event. After baking the pizza, the delivery boy will deliver the pizza and receive the payment, which includes giving a receipt to the customer. In this example, we use message objects not only for informational objects, as the pizza order, but also for physical objects like the pizza or the money. We can do this because those physical objects actually act as informational objects. When the pizza arrives at the customer's door, she will recognize this arrival and therefore know that the pizza has arrived, which is exactly the purpose of the message event in the customer's pool. Of course, we can only use the model in that way because this example is not meant to be executed by a process engine.